Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Zero, and welcome to Cold Front, which is an RPG Maker horror game where two friends find themselves trapped in a blizzard in the middle of summer. On a cold winter evening, a new family moved into the house next door. Then a few days later, a bright doorbell echoed throughout the house. I quickly followed behind my mother, walking to answer the, the door to peek at who'd be standing outside. It was the lady next door who had just moved in. The lady and my mother started talking, until she finally saw me hiding behind my mother's back. She then said this, I have a son your age, but he hasn't come out of his room ever since we moved in. Those damn video games. Could you go in there and be his friend? Ooh. Perspective? Whoa. This house is much bigger than I thought. The stairs coming up here are a bit too high, though. It'd be bad if anyone fell. That kid's in his room up there, huh? Both of that lady started bossing me around as soon as she saw me. I'm the one who's going to decide if I want to be his friend or not. Good for you. What kind of kid is he anyway? Is he some kind of fairy tale princess or something? Huh. Oh man. I'm weirded out. I'm not weirded out in a bad way, but just weirded out in like... Perspective in an RPG, RPG Maker game. I think I've only seen it done a couple of times. Ugh, look at all these boxes. Guess they didn't finish unpacking their stuff. Hey. A stuffed elk doll. I have a stuffed bear back in my place. I know most people think the horns and elks are cooler, but I like bears better. There's a box here. Another box over there. And a solid snake over there. You saw nothing. There's a box here. Another box over there. What? It's locked. Who's there? I don't know that voice. Are, are you the kid that's stuck in the room all day? Open the door first and I'll tell ya. Or I'll blow this house down. No, no thank you. Please just leave. Eh, yeah, why not? Just open it, will ya? Kick down the door. You leave me no choice. What, what are you- Stay back, I'm going in. Wait a minute. You're not actually trying to break down my- Are you actually doing it? Yeah. What? The door quickly opened before you got to kick the door. See, it worked. A little disappointed you get, you get to uh, kick that door, but still. Ah, oh, hey. It worked. Wait, are you crying? Are you crying because I came in here? But I just got here. Do you like being alone that much? I was already crying. And that isn't the reason why. Is it because you just moved? Huh? Then why are you crying? Because I'm lonely. Aren't we all? All my friends are back at where I used to live. Now I have no one. No matter how hard I try, all the kids here already know each other. It's going to be hard for me to fit in. Even if they do hang out with me, it's out of pity or adults telling them because I'm new. I don't want that. You're the same, right? You only came here because my mom told you to, right? No, I just want to kick this door in. Because it's funny. Well, yeah. I knew it. You also feel sorry for me. But I didn't come here to try and be your friend. What? Then why? I was curious about what kind of kid you were. And from what I've seen so far, I think you're pretty lame and whiny and a bit of a scaredy crybaby. Ah! What? You're so mean. But hey. I didn't say I felt sorry for you, did I? Do you just assume everyone feels the same way you think they'd feel? I talked to you once and you're already accusing me of something I never even thought of. I think the real reason why you won't get any friends is the way you're thinking right now. Deciding what will happen in the future in your head, and never actually trying anything in the present to fix it. If you're worried about people being insincere when they approach you, why don't you make them be sincere then? I don't do friends just because someone told me to. 
So you try and make me want to be your friend first. Don't push people away from the start. And keep working hard. And people that'll care about you will always stay by your side. That's what I was taught anyway. Okay. Color coding wise? I, it's just a random thought. I just can't hit my head. But I'm like thinking of like Hunter x Hunter, right? Like with Kula and Gon. After a rather noisy first introduction, Winnie and I soon became inseparable. Well, our protag is not wearing green, but I just got that vibe, like the Genki thing, since elementary school. And even now, when we graduate high school, everyone in town knew us two were close. We went and did everything together. Same street, same school, same class, same lectures, same club, same interests, same hobbies. We were always together no matter what, to the point that sometimes it even felt a little eerie. But Winnie suddenly stopped talking to me since last winter. We haven't talked since. I don't know what he's thinking. Mmm. It's the end of July. Winnie's family's moving far away tomorrow. So here's what I'm gonna call, right? From the start, just with that little line. This is, this is just a shot in the dark. I, I really don't know anything about this game. Um, Doppelganger. Just because of the... Stop talking to me and like they kind of like did the weird colorization on the face. So that's just a guess. I could be wrong. My parents don't know we haven't spoken months, so they told me to go out on a short drive with him. So today was the last day Winnie and I can probably spend our time together. You think you'd be in the middle of a meaningful reminiscence? Okay, here's another thing. They're color coding our names even when we use the word I, right? I'm wondering if that's going to be a gimmick, because the whole, like, like I said, my fear, doppelganger. Maybe there's going to be, like, a little twist with the lettering. You think you'd be in the middle of a meaningful, reminiscent conversation with your friend by now. If it was a day before you're letting someone you've known for almost all your whole life leave. But the car is silent. Click the elk symbol with your mouse to investigate. Wait, we got click? Huh. Ugh, I just can't sit here in silence forever. Fine, should I say something? Not yet. Cause I gotta think of a conversation topic first. Would it be too weird to start rummaging through someone's stuff without their permission? Especially if you haven't talked to that someone in almost half of a year. It'd be too awkward. I mean, they seem happy. I'll take a peek later or something when he's not here. Sure. So. What's with that look? Oh, that's nothing. It's just been so long. I'm surprised you talked to me first. <laughs> Go on. Is your leg all healed? Ah. It took you long enough to ask. <laughs> of course. I broke it last winter, right? It's been months since. Sometimes I lose strength in them, but... Other than that, it's all fully healed. Everything's back to normal. I never knew I'd suddenly trip down the stairs like that. And on the day of the finals, too. I later heard that you played my position in the game on my behalf that night. Yeah, and I didn't win. You were always better at hockey than me. The audience loves you more anyway, too. Hmm. Conspiracy? No. Like, why, why would we, like, we'd be there like near the stairs to trip him? Why were you moving again? Don't you remember? I got accepted into the uni we wanted to go. The transportation costs are high. My parents are moving their workplace near there anyway. So we just decided to move somewhere close to where the school is. University, huh? Isn't that nice? Hmm? Ah, that does make me wonder. Hey, didn't we apply to the same school together? Ah, was I the only one that got accepted while well, you got turned down? Ah, uh, don't feel so bad, Augie. I'll study hard for you on your behalf. Don't call me Augie. Uh, is he actually trying to encourage me? It just sounds like he's passive-aggressively showing off. Where are the people crying outside your house? 
Ah, those were my other friends. They all came by to say goodbye. Other friends, huh? So many people were crying. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I saw you get a bunch of bouquets and letters. Uh, and last minute confessions. Just when did you get this popular? You sure you want to spend your last day with me instead of your countless fans? Why? Do you not want to? Maybe we were like... The, uh, bad friend. So, when are you going to ask? Ask what? Wasn't all this you warming up to the conversation so you can ask about that? The reason why I suddenly stopped talking to you. You know why. Because you're an embarrassment to be around. Just by looking at the short conversation we had a moment ago. It's obvious that the difference between the two of us is incom incomparable. I got into the school you wanted to go to. I have a bucket full of other friends that adore me. I've been praised and recognized by the public. Then there's you. What are you? What do you have? No brains, no social life, no skills. What does that make you? Trash. Trash is what you are. I pity you. You. What did you just say? Hm? What's with that look? Say it. Say what you just said again. Oh, okay. What's with that look? What's wrong? You're so cold all of a sudden. Did I say something wrong? Let's just calm down and... How can I calm down when you're sitting there treating me like walking trash? Why are you yelling all of a sudden? Who do you think you are? What do you always... Is it... Snowing? Yeah. The cold represents the gulf between two friends. Just to be clear, it's currently July, right? No, it's August. Yeah. What's going on? What's going on? I don't know. I was too focused on talking with you. It was just like that when I looked back at the window. Uh, outside. L let's just go outside first. And... D doors are frozen. Open sesame. Ha! Huh. Wait, that's not open sesame. That's a Kamehameha wave. Kame... Open sesame! I think the car just got colder than before, Augustine. It's totally jammed. Gah. Oh, all right, I pull it. It just won't budge. This leaves you no choice. Wait, don't tell me I'm gonna start kicking my... Yee. We're kicking. The door swung open. See, you always solve your problems with kicking. It's pro this is proven by the opening. We're out! Ah! Whoa, we really are out. Whoa, sorry, sorry. Show dodge faster. <laughs> uh, Augustine, your outfit. Cold front. I really like this perspective thing. What the hell's going on? Why am I suddenly standing in the middle of a snowstorm in July? Snow in July. This really is serious. I didn't know climate change would come to be this extreme. Oh god, it's like the day after tomorrow. Wait, wait, that's what that movie was called, right? The one with, like, the natural disasters everywhere all at once. Everyone, let's take better care of the Earth. That's not important right now. I mean, it, it is important, but... I guess even climate change can't just change outfits out of blue. Look, look. Our clothes. 
It's the outfit we wore last winter. This is awfully convenient. At least it keeps me warm. But if it was changed for our convenience sake... Something doesn't match up. Our clothes suddenly swapping already doesn't match up. Winnie's outfit? Now that I think about it, your clothes, aren't those for indoors? Yeah. Well, I did wear this during the winter. It was only when I was inside a building. Usually at school. Compared to you, who's got a cozy hat with those ear thingies, a coat, even those cute little boots, perfect for outdoors. Aren't you cold? Yeah, no, I'm freezing. You moron, get back in the car right now. But the door won't even close now after all that kicking you did. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Ah, so frustrating. Why is our outfit different? What even is this blizzard? What does all this mean? It means it's cold. Outside. A little panic. We gotta preserve our energy. Ah. Hey, you okay? You've been shivering this whole time. Yeah, it's just... So cold. Let me... Sit down. Warm my hands a bit. Could you please check the car while I do that? Check for something that might be of use or if anything's wrong with it. How could I say no if you're asking me like that? I'll be quick. No, I won't. Don't close your eyes. If you do, you won't be waking up. Haha. <laughs> Bye-bye. Damn. Oh, everything's frozen the inside already, huh? Need something to melt it. Something with heat. Will I be able to find it? Wait. What is they were all out of fuel? I swear it was almost full when I checked it before. The situation's more serious than I thought. Am I really going to freeze death out here? What was that just now? I swear I just saw something. You mean the stuffed animals? Am I seeing things? Did the cold get to me? Ah, get a grip on yourself, Augustine. Wait, this is... I don't remember him smoking. Oh yeah. He pretended to so he'd look cool in front of the cool kids. When I warned him, all of them just called me a loser. The fact that he kept this means... Is he still hanging out with them? Just ignore my worries for him, huh? What am I not cool enough for him? Am I really an embarrassment? Anyways, the one thing that I actually need... The lighter. It's not here. Where the hell did he put it? Maybe he's just carrying it. I think that's everything I need to check for now. Why is this suddenly happening to me? It's enough torch as it is having to spend time with... Ah! We're winning. What's going on? What happened? My hands are freezing. Then why were you building a snowman with your bare hands? No, 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 that, that's not all. There is to why I screamed. Though it is a tinsy part of it. When you were still investigating the car, I... I saw an ominous shadow moving in the distance through the storm. An ominous shadow. Yeah, yeah, it really scared me. So I made this little snow friend to come my mind. Cute, right? Say hi to him. I'm assuming a bad ending happens if we ruin the snowman. Well, we'll worry about the bad ending later. Or should I worry about it now? No, bad ending first. Kick! Ah! 
The snowman was crushed under your boot. We're gonna get murdered by a snowman now. It fell lifelessly to the ground. You know this isn't the time to be messing around. How can you act so childish? Read the damn room. Sorry. Anyways, I don't think we should stay here much longer. I have a bad feeling. Did you find anything? It says the fuel's all out, so the car probably won't move. And we'll need a heat source for the frozen parts inside. Couldn't find the lighter. Ah, nah. I left it in my room somewhere. Uh, let's look for something else. Oh, then that means... Nothing will change if we stay by the car, so... We have no choice but to walk forward. Find shelter, heat, and fuel. Tell me when you're ready. Alright, let's go. I know I scolded him just now. But I didn't expect for him to tone down this much. Did I go too far? Like, ironically, get the good ending. Like, that was the right choice. You defeated the evil snowman! Come on, pick it up. I know you're cold. His walk is slow. He seems to be very cold. Ah. <sighs> He's too slow! Thank you. This leaves me no choice. I'll go talk to him and do... that. Oh, no. Alright. Get on my back. Ah. You obviously can't walk because of the cold. I'll carry you. You sure? <laughs> you don't have to overdo it. Since when did you care about that? I said it's fine. Just stop wasting any more time and... But if I trouble you, you'll... I got this. I can lift you up easy and... I, I said I, I don't need it. What? Don't want a trash like me carrying you around. Would that be too embarrassing for you? It's not like that. Why do you keep talking that way? Why do you keep talking like- Oh, Fine. Whatever. It's my fault for asking. Is this Chris's blood? That can't be. Is that... Blood! Blood. What does it look like it's been dragged on the floor? Um... What's this? That's... That's us. Symbolically. Us. A dead body that looks like a younger version of me. We haven't been dead this entire time, have we? A frozen death covered in snow and blood. There's a deep scratch wound across his chest that was attacked with something sharp. It's holding hands with a body that looks like a younger version of Winnie. Gah. A dead body that looks like a younger version of Winnie. Frozen to death covered in snow and blood. There's multiple stab wounds on his stomach as if it was pierced with something sharp. It's holding hands with a body that looks like a younger version of me. Huh. What the hell is going on? The sudden snowstorm. Almost freezing to death. And now I have to look at my own dead body. This... This is all just a prank you set up, right? Tell me this is just a sick prank to mess with me. Because... There's just no way all this is real. This can't be happening. I can't believe it. You're really telling me there's... Something here of us that can cause those terrible wounds. No, let, let's, let's be positive. The body's looking like us is totally freaking me out, but... Seeing how it's right on the middle of our path, maybe it's a sign. A, a very personalized and terrifying don't go this way sign. There still must be time for us to turn back. It's not like we ever attack them, it's staying right behind us. Hey, I'm, I'm staring right behind you. Bark. Ah! Bark! Oh, there's quick time events. Oh no. Dodge. Back. Wow, actually. Off. 
You're able to buy time by shoving the creature back with your bag. Just had the jinx it. What are you staying around for? Run! We are all good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We are running. It is Crash Bandicoot. Ah! Wow! This is actually a rough chase, by the way. Ah! Winning! Oh, 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 sorry, I tripped off. Uh, I'll be fine, so you should... Don't you pull that sacrifice card, just get up already. You pulled Winnie up. Huh, thank you. You saved me. Shut up, we're not out of this yet. There's nowhere to hide with how flat and wide this field is. It's impossible to drive it away. We're gonna be out of breath any second now because of this goddamn snowstorm. What the hell do we do? Oh, Yagi, I I've got a plan. Hear me out. The floor we're standing on right now, I think it's ice. If we slam our foot down hard enough, we can make it crack. We can guide the monster to come towards our direction. And on its way to us, it'll step on the crack. And with the ice not being able to handle its weight, the monster will fall right under the water. Are you insane? Where have you fallen to? Do you have a better idea? Uh, no. Exactly. We'll get caught if we waste any more time. Come on! I got it! Don't tell me what to do! Let's stomp on at the same time! Ready? One, two! The ice cracked. We did it! You're gonna freeze, alright. Yes, it's working! It's going down! Wait. The cracks bring wider than I thought. It. Well, well, ah! Augustine! Gotcha. I knew it. I knew we could mess up in this somehow. What did I tell you? How deep is this hole? It's basically a cliff. What the hell's going on in this place? It just doesn't make any sense. Alright, pull me up. Hurry! Augustine. Winnie? What should I... What should I do? I... I can't... I can't feel my hands. I can't put any strength with them. It's all frozen. I feel like... My fingers are going to fall off any second. I can't... I can't pull you up. I'm trying, it just won't let me. What do I do? What do we do? Don't... Don't do that. Don't do that to me. You think this is funny? It's not. I'm being serious. Stop joking around. Pull me up. I'm not... It's not a joke. I wish it was, but it's not. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm trying. But no matter how hard I try to hold on, I just can't. Don't let go. Please don't let go. I'm your friend. We're friends. We are friends, right? Long live the king. Ah. 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 How am I still? Ah, oh, yeah, my leg. It hurts. I can't get up. I can't freeze to death here. I can't. I can't go out like this. Not because of him. Get up, get up, move, 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 move already! You got up. Cold, 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 it's too cold. I never knew a person can ever feel this cold. Everything hurts, like I'm being stabbed, the cold, it's... Piercing me. Oh, I, I won't be able to get up next time. I fall. Of course, everything here is frozen too. How does snow when it's indoors? Wait, this is 
the hallway of his house. Why here? Is he somehow connected to why all this is happening? Uh, just thinking about it makes my head hurt. But now I need heat, heat, heat. Anything warm, hot, literally anything. That's right. The lighter. He said it's somewhere in his, his room. The stuffed elk is gone. Empty, like my soul. Like I get the lighter first. It's locked. Huh? No, no, no. Why is it? Why is it locked? No, 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 no. Please, why? 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 Why, why now? I would kick it open, but do oh, have the strength this time. The key. I need to find the key. I'm losing my senses. I need to find it quick. I should check out the other room first. What? I don't see any lighter here. Remember the smile and muscle. Work hard. Take stuff out of your pocket before putting them in the washer. They're friends, right? Take the keys, return books. That's gonna see what the stairs. Oh, so yeah, so there is a possibility we sabotaged him. Maybe we like left something there. And that's why they stopped talking. Did he put these up? Well, look at these pathetic pieces of paper, be helpful. What the hell am I supposed to do now? Why are the lights coming from under the water? Is that an ambulance siren? Why is it so distant? I don't get it. You guys have probably got in a car accident. Or something weird. You're, you're like in a shared mental space. Thinking back to that note on the mirror. Maybe he left the keys in one of his clothes when he put them in the washer again. Wouldn't hurt to check. I knew it. There's definitely something in... What the hell is this? The, the zipper... On its back. Is this... A fake bodysuit looks like me. I know it's a hallucination, but why me? Why me in here? In his house? Maybe because he like looked up to you? For now. Keys. Need to focus on the keys. Took the keys from its pocket. Don't do that, by the way. Yes, this is it. Uh, why is it so dark? I can't see anything. The lighter. Where's the lighter? You desperately moved around the room with your arms reached out. And soon you suddenly feel something in your grasp. I did it. I found it. Jump scare? I need to light up the room. Nope. Just me. What is all this? Th those are all... But this... This is his room. What? Why am I in his... What the furniture look like? Me? Is there a perspective twist going on here? Ah, oh, I get it now. I knew it was suspicious. We were always stuck together. That bastard used me like I was his own for his own advantage. Like I'm an object he put in his room. Like I'm his clothes he can wear whenever he liked. To act like me, to copy me. He applied to the same university as soon as he learned what school I wanted to go to. I mean, it's because you guys liked each other. He started acting nice, got a confession out of someone I already liked before. He suddenly got interested in an award I was already working to get, and he was recognized for it. He even got into the hockey team I was part of, since I was young and stole my position. And played in a game I was supposed to and won. Stealing all the attention from everyone, even from my close friends who I knew before he came along. Everywhere I go, everything I do, everyone that I meet, every time I wanted something, he always shows up and... Steals, replaces, ruins everything from my life. And leaves you with nothing. Now that I truly have nothing left. Now that he's already stolen everything from me. 
He starts ignoring me, talking down to me, pities me, and now... He must be trying to get rid of me for good. To throw me away like a piece of useless trash. To get rid of any evidence of how he used me. I think he just looked up to you. I think that's like the obvious thing. He like, you were, his, you were his best friend, he looked up to you. He wanted to be like you, he just indirectly became better than you and your things you did. Unintentionally. That's right. I was always suspicious of him. I always hated him. I don't know how he did it, but... Everything that's happened from the moment I got out of the car is probably his fault, too. Yeah, all this must be his fault. He's trying to hunt me down. Augustine. So the monster that attacked us earlier, that was obviously, um, a mixture of our two plushies turned into, like, a monster. Like a man-bear pig. It wasn't a pig, it was more like a bear and a man. Man-bear elk. Augustine, is that you? It really is you. So you were here. I was so worried. I'm glad you're safe. You. How did you... Well, this place hasn't been really realistic so far. I couldn't hear anything after you fell down that hole. So I knew something else must have happened to you, instead of... So I followed you in. I fell, and now I'm here. Hmm. Scissors. I don't know why this place looks like my house, so... Oh, and while I was going around looking for you, when he held up a gas tank, I found some fuel. Anyways, are you okay? Are you hurt? Found the lighter. Lighter. That's great. Oh, no. Someone's holding fuel. Now that we're both safe again, since we both looked around this floor, we should go downstairs. I'll wait for you outside. Can I grab this, or no? No, that, I guess I have to do with, like, the picture symbolism. If he was able to come down here, seeing how I survived after falling down, there's a chance that monster is also still around. Down here is the stairs to the first floor. This bastard, he's... He's probably planning something to get rid of me again. Yeah, just like how he tried to put that hole earlier. I need to... Push him down the stairs. Just like before. I need to... Strike him first. Push Winnie down. Bad ending, go. Thinking back to that day when I saw him fall down for the first time. I might have wished for him to just die right then and there. Ugh. Ugh. What, what? Why is everything upside down? This is... The car! Is that... Siren. An ambulance, huh? Him. What about him? He isn't breathing. That is a very happy person. I have lost consciousness after the sudden crash. I found myself waking up in the overthrown car. I was transferred to the hospital as soon as I was found. Apparently he died instantly on the spot when the accident occurred. It was an instant death. I couldn't have done anything. It wasn't me who caused the accident anyway. Or maybe you did, actually. And I was passed out when he died. How could I have ever changed his outcome? His death was no has nothing to do with me. Compared to him, I was able to get off with only a few minor wounds and bruises. I was in the center of everyone's attention ever since the accident. 
Oh, you're right. It must have been scary. I'm so glad you weren't hurt that badly. Thank God you survived. You're so strong for keeping yourself together like this, even though you had just lost your friend. It's lonely, right? You're sad, right? Tell us anytime if you need anything. We'll be here for you. No one is looking for him anymore. They only care about me. They only compliment me. They only worry about me. They only recognize me. Just me. Just me. Just me. Finally. Now that he's gone. I'm not alone. What's a little murder between friends? Okay, so I, I guess the ending branch is probably just that one choice. The earlier choices, I'm assuming, didn't matter. They're probably like a role-playing kind of thing. So, um, we'll go back to that choice and get the other ending. Don't push Winnie down. Stem out of it, Augustine! Are you okay? You're sweating bullets. What's with that scary expression on your face? You keep talking to yourself and accusing me of something I never said. I called your name multiple times just now, and you didn't even answer. We can't go on like this. Augustine, I... I have something to ask you. When I... fell down from the stairs last winter... I saw... you. I know you didn't push me. I know I fell because I accidentally tripped myself. I know that, but I knew you were at a distance where if you wanted, you could have easily reached down and stopped me from falling. When I was lying on the floor, about to pass out, I also heard footsteps of someone leaving the area, and I heard that someone else called the ambulance other than you. I, that, but despite it all, I didn't feel resentful or enraged, I just felt Confused. I think that was the first time I started seriously reflecting on our relationship. All along, I thought we were best friends. But since then, I realized you might have thought of us differently. It felt like a wake-up call. Ever since then, I was paranoid about how you'd feel about me. I thought you hated me. I thought you didn't want to see me ever again. Uh, technically, our protect does hate you. I was scared. I didn't know what to do or what to say, so I started distancing myself from you. But that didn't solve anything. It just made our relationship worse. What we need is... A conversation. An honest conversation. Nothing will change if we just shut ourselves from one another. I'm not mad. I'm not disappointed. I'm not going to blame you for anything that's happened. So just talk to me. Tell me everything. If you don't, I'll never know until the day I die. Like that ever ending. Augustine. I actually double-clicked on that one. And when I heard the words, tell me how you feel, I had forgotten all my suspicion, my hatred, my fear of Winnie. Nothing but all my feelings have been balling up for all these years were left in me. We started to helplessly flood out in the most unsightly way possible. I, I, envy you for succeeding, and I'm scared of what'll happen to me in the future because of it. I know I'm supposed to feel happy for you. I know I'm supposed to celebrate your success by your side. I know I'm being selfish. I know I'm being overly emotional. I know that more than anyone. I know I'm being pathetic. I know that, I know that, but I just, I just can't help it. Whenever I see you, I can't help but think you stole everything from me. Whenever I start something, you suddenly start copying me and then take it away from me. It wasn't just once or twice, but every single time. Then you soon master what I want to do, making you loved and recognized covering me behind your massive shadow, burying everything I've done so far in the ground, taking away everyone that I want to impress, having everyone's attention and fortune heading towards you. And now that you're adored by everyone, you must have felt embarrassed for having to call a nobody like me your friend. No talent, no social life, no skills. Now all I have left is the fact that I'm your friend. But you have so much more in life than me, you won't need me anymore. So I thought you were getting rid of me. I was terrified. I was terrified of you. Is that really how you felt all this time? 
Augustine, I'll never leave you. There's nothing in this world that can replace you. You were my hero. I looked up to you ever since we first met. I was able to be the way I am now because you inspired me with how bright and friendly you were. I was able to feel at ease no matter where I went or what I did because I had a friend like you with me. I think that's why I kept following you around. Because I didn't want to leave your side. But I now realize there are still things not even a friend should do. But there's a line that not even a friend should cross. I crossed that line way too many times up till now. Huh. Now don't blame yourself. Your own success is your own thing. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I should have respected your line. I should have thought about how you'd feel. I should have put myself in your shoes. I was too blinded by admiration back then that... I couldn't see it. you were my one and only friend before my hero. It must have been so frustrating. It must have been so upsetting. You don't have to forgive me. I know apologizing that won't change the past. But I just want you to know this. You are the coolest and brightest person I've ever met in my whole life, Augustine. I was only able to do all the things I've accomplished so far because you encouraged me back then. Because you gave me hope. You work hundreds, thousands, million times harder than me. And I remind myself every day how lucky I am to have ever met a friend like you. What do you mean you have nothing? You're someone who could take over the entire world if you want to. You're amazing like that. Thank you for trusting me and telling me the truth. Ah, oh, now I get it. It wasn't Winnie that was hunting me. The real hunter was... Myself. Or deciding what's going to happen in the future. Whatever people will think of me in my head. Blaming others for all my misfortunes in my life. Not trying hard enough in the first place and justifying that by saying... Someone who is skilled than me or more popular than me will come along and take all the glory anyway. It was all me. Even though Winnie stayed the same, I was too blinded by my own jealousy and insecurity. That no matter what he said or did, I distort the truth. To even try to talk to him properly and decide he was only out to ignore me, out to hurt me. Interpreting him the way I feared and believed in the lies I told myself to justify hating him. I was at fault all along. <sighs> it's not true. I'm not as great as you think I am. You've always been a good friend. You always were. I was a fool to have to ever taken it the wrong way. I'm sorry. I should have never let you get hurt. You're way more important than my pride. What was I even thinking? How could I have been so childish? I was stupid. I'm ashamed. Hey. We can call it even now since I did let you fall into that giant hole earlier. Is it really okay to brush this off that simply? <laughs> Augustine. We're friends, right? I don't know, you were gonna push me down the stairs. I don't think I deserve you. If you're okay with it, I'd love for you to be my friend. Then... Yeah, we are. <laughs> ah, are you okay? Breathe, Aki, breathe. It's been so long since I cried this brunch. Well, it's okay. Don't cry. Smile. Shh. All calm down now? Uh, yeah, thanks. Glad to hear it. So, Augie, remember the we're already dead theory I told you? I've been doing some more thinking on that, and... You know how people say... A person sees their life flash before their eyes. When they're about to die or they're seriously injured. What if this is that? The situation we're in now is the flashback. Well, for us, it isn't just watching the flash like a movie. We're actually experiencing it. We're living it, even. That means we're about to die in real life. I did hear ambulance sirens go off a few moments ago, but... Wait. Then, where are we now? Probably an important memory that we constantly look back to. A memory that impacted our lives the most. Oh, and another thing. Don't people usually see these flashbacks on their own? But look at us. We're sharing it. I think this is because the memories we're thinking of are the exact same. 
What were some memories you think that impacted you deeply in life? Meeting you and seeing you fall last winter. Mine too. Our first introduction and the first time the crack in our relationship was visibly shown. So the reason why it's suddenly winter now, why our clothes are suddenly changed, and why this place looks like your house, is because we're in a mixed memory of the winter when we first met. And the winter when I fell. The house is left the same way when my family first moved in. And our clothes are what we were wearing on the day I fell. Your indoor wear since you were inside the school. You're in outdoor wear since you were leaving the building. Ah! It's hurting my head! So what are you saying is... We're currently in a coma and in a critical condition. Probably because of a car accident or something. And our consciousness are trapped in a mixed memory of... The winter when we met... And when you fell down the stairs. Wow, you summarized that perfectly. Who cares about that? How do we get out of here alive? Hmm... Ah, I got it. This is a flashback of an important memory. That we look back on often, right? Because of our regret. Because it deeply impacted our lives. If that's why we're here having this flashback, if we get rid of our regret, get rid of the thing that's mentally unhunting us, the thing that keeps making us look back to this memory, maybe we'll snap back out to the present instead of the past. Back to reality. Since no regret means no looking back. By the thing that's haunting us, you mean. Yeah. I think that monster represents our unhealthy relationship the past few years. It looks like two different animals were forcefully mixed together. Bear Elk, man. It felt like it was in tremendous pain. It's suffering. If we defeat that creature, I'm sure it'd mean that our relationship is restored. Our regrets will be gone. If only it were that easy. Because we got rid of what was making us suffer. We solved it. We can escape the flashback. Alright, let's do it then. I trust you. Okay. No need to get that cheerful over it. So, how do we defeat it? You're gonna burn, alright? All we have on us are... Fuel. And... The lighter. Lighter. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Rarg! I feel people getting along in there! I don't like people getting along. Ah! Speak of the devil! And he appears. Well, I really hope it isn't the devil. Yippee, how convenient for us. Alright, tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. Alrighty. I'll spice to get the fuel as soon as I see him. Then I'll turn on the lighter and check it, yeah. Yeah, I love it when we finish each other's sentences. Let's go then. The first floor. We got this. We got this. When he's very cheerful. There it is. Where? Right there. There. I don't see. Ah! What? It's looking right at us. Get the fuel. Do it. Wait, it looks kind of cute once you get used to. Stop basing around and pour the damn fuel now! Now, Augie. Aye. You're gonna burn, all right. Got it. Curses! My only weakness! Fire! And friendship! Mostly the fire part, though. We did it. We did it! We really did it! Woo! That was so cool just now, Augie! No, the way you for that tank was way more cooler. They were both cool. Ha! Huh. Now we get rid of the monster, uh, what's our next move? Um, the fire is spreading, guys. Oh, yeah, 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 it's our next move about that. I didn't think this far ahead, actually. <laughs> you what? Maybe we'll let ourselves burn here, too. We'll somehow wake up back in the real world. That doesn't sound very comforting. If I die, I'm going to kill you. Heh <laughs> Oh, what? 
Why is everything upside down? This is... the car. Is that... Siren. An ambulance, huh? Winnie. Where's Winnie? Winnie! Ah! So my theory was right! The car crashed Gobatrope! Isn't this cliché? Ha! Ah. I'm glad it wasn't the version where we were already dead. Now that would have been troubling. Yeah, I did mention that. How can you smile at a time like this? But you're smiling too. We lost consciousness after the sudden crash. And found ourselves waking up in the overthrown car. We were transferred to the hospital as soon as we were found. After our checkup, the results showed that despite the severity of the accident, when he only suffered minor injuries like small bruises, never feels to surprise me that guy. Prepared to him, I... Fractured my left leg. Now that's some karma. I didn't feel upset though. It was only fair. This made us even. Winnie's move was pushed back after the accident. For almost a whole summer, he stayed by my side so that I could recover faster. The sudden blizzard, the icy field, the monster we faced. We we're still not sure if what we experienced was a dream, a hallucination, or indeed a flashback that Winnie talked about. But one thing's for sure. Because of what we went through, Winnie and I were finally able to have an honest conversation. For the first time ever since we met, we became best friends. Eventually, Winnie left. Later. The winning isn't by my side anymore. That doesn't mean I'll be alone. And then Winnie went on to become a supremely rich, because Winnie apparently was just good at everything. So, that's it for Cold Front. Uh, this game was part of a Korean RPG Maker jam, where they had a month to make a game. Uh, this is the developer's second game, by the way. And it's actually pretty good, especially for like a second game. Um, just so the storyline, it is a little cliche. Even Winnie mentions it's a little cliche of the whole coma thing and guy yeah, confront you in a like demons kind of stuff. And the the themeage of the story with the whole like jealousy things and friends kind of splitting apart is obviously a very grounded story. It's very common in real life. Uh, on that note, I mean, despite the story being cliche, it is, you know, it's got kind of a nice wrapped up story. It's a little, how you would say, um, heartfelt. Like, the whole story is very nice. And the fact that the characters, despite whatever flaws they may have, and particularly for our pro tag, they're overall like nice characters and everything, right? There is a kind of air of like somewhat comedy here and there. And then the story, assuming you don't get the bad ending, wraps up like everything works out kind of thing. So on one hand, you lose a little bit of the horror aspect because of that. So it's not quite a scary game. This is more of a, uh, I would say this is actually more of a thriller than an outright horror game. Or like a comedy drama, almost. Like a psychological comedy drama. But I also don't necessarily mind happy endings. And I think if you gave these characters like a darker ending, or if you went a little too dark with the story, you would actually like lose something. Like it, it, it wouldn't fit what they were like kind of presenting. So the way the way it was done, it was done correctly. Except for that, uh, I think I might have already mentioned it. If not, like I said, the the Gale game is very pretty. I like the sprites, I like the perspective thing, um, I like the CGs, I like the characters, and overall, I think it's you know executed correctly. For a Game Jam thing, well, they did give a month, but for a Game Jam thing, even then, despite that, um, it is an hour-long game, and it's put together pretty well. But yeah, anyway, so if you go watch you play Cold Front, I'll see you guys later, and take it easy.